After building my DIY CNC machine, I started adding upgrades. I added light, limit switches, Z-probe and changed a spindle, but cable chains were still the same, which means too small. In my previous video, I asked you if you would like to see a video about replacing and designing the cable chain. You said yes, so here it is. Let me take you on a journey of designing my own cable chain. The first step was to get rid of the old cable chain. I think I found this design on Thingiverse and it was probably designed for a 3D printer, that's why it is so small. The design itself was working flawlessly and is pretty nice. If you don't have a lot of cable on your machine, you can go with this one. The only downside is that adding or removing any cables to this cable chain is not easy at all and in order to do that, I had to cut this top piece and once the cables are free, we can take a look at my simple, almost parametric design. Everything is there for a reason in this design. For example, the chamfers. The wall thickness is optimized and I tried to keep the tolerances at a somehow decent level so that it should be possible to print it on most 3D printers. There is start, middle and end piece with a hole so that it is easy to attach it to the profile and a special piece that is designed just for the indie mill. The design is parametric so we can easily adjust the width with parameters. For example, here I have 20 mm cable chain and now it's 30 millimeters. It's that easy. If you want more, you can just simply change it to, for example, 60. And here you have a 60 millimeter cable chain. I keep the bigger version as a separate file because the whole layout is a bit different. But other than that, you can just easily modify it with parameters and it will work fine. Of course, there was a lot of prototyping to get it working smoothly and make it printable. Some designs were too flexible, like this one, some weren't working that smoothly, some of them were too sad, and some of them were too happy. Finally, I made something that was kind of okay. And my printer can do that now, and I love it. The plan was to use 20mm cable chain on the y-axis, because that fits nicely on the profile, and 40mm cable chain on the x-axis for the very same reason. It doesn't make a lot of sense, because there are more cables on the y-axis than on x-axis, it's just for aesthetic reasons. Depending on the size of your CNC machine, printing may take some time as there is quite a lot of elements to print. My advice is to print just a few pieces, check if everything works smoothly together, and if not, you can adjust your slicer settings or adjust the model a little bit to get it to work perfectly. Once everything is printed and assembled, you can fix it to the aluminum profile with M3 by 8mm screw and a T-nut as shown here. Add more cable chain, fix it about in the middle with another screw and nut, make sure that it is not going to limit the movement of the machine. After putting in place all the cables, you can close the cable chain from the top with printed clips. You can just press them in place, but hammer may help a bit. And they are quite easy to break and sometimes do not fit that well, so it's a good idea to print some more. I will touch it right here and I have to redesign this piece to actually fit it to the profile. Here is the bigger 40mm version for the x-axis, of course the process of installing is exactly the same, there are just two screws instead of one and plenty of space for the cables. I also designed a different end module that attaches to one of the motor screws. Here I am adding all the missing clips and if you are wondering, once properly installed with a hammer, the clips are quite secure and shouldn't fall out. After a short test, it was really promising so I thought I will machine a small aluminum part for a rocket launcher that we are working on at Silesian Aerospace Technologies Science Club. 
and after five years of making videos I'm still not able to properly set the focus on the camera. Anyway, here is this piece after some sanding and I think that concludes this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget that there is a link in the description to the files that I designed for this cable chain. Thank you very much for watching, happy making and see you in the next video.